This thing's seriously big and heavy. I uh, don't know how many kilos it weighs now, but it's a lot. Uh, the sooner I've got some sort of a mount to put it on, the better. Okay, this is what is known as the TNE. It stands for Traverse and Elevation. Uh, basically, this part here clamps up on the Traverse uh, um, bar or whatever it's called. This component here on the tripod, you can see there's the TNE mounted, and the top end of it mounts to the underneath of the the uh, 50 cal, in some cases uh, 30 cal, depending on what you're building. But obviously, I'm using I'm building a, an M2 uh, HB 50 cal uh, tripod, so 50 cal. Uh, so basically, uh, it consists of uh, two threads, um, two threaded bars, if you like. Um, this one here threads into this tube here which is mounted to the traverse bar and um, that's um, a reverse thread or anti-clockwise thread as to what type of thread it is but that doesn't really matter um, at least not to me uh, and then this part up here which is another bar but this one is a normal forward or, or clockwise thread which is threaded into this one you can see better if I show you these two diagrams here uh, you can see this one threads with a forward thread and this one has a reverse thread so basically when you rotate this wheel here this one here, this component at the top, winds out of the bar here and this thread here winds out of that tube here. So basically it grows outwards from the wheel, if you like. So that's how it's done and there are markings stamped in on the top of the wheel which look like that there. So here you can see the part that mounts underneath the 50 cal. And uh, let's, have a, let's have a think. Yep, okay. So what we have here is that's turned 180 degrees near enough. Uh, you can see there's the, the part that clamps on the traverse uh, arm. So this one, this component here should be rotated that way yep like so uh, but at the moment you can see the numbers and there's a little pointer which sits on the top of the you can see there's like a washout with a little arrow pointing on it uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure how that sits you would think that that pointer should always be pointing forwards and it should be locked somehow now yeah i've just got i've just worked out how it works uh now i've just been talking okay what what it is is the top bar here this piece of stud or threaded bolt whatever you want to call it has a slot in it and this washer sits in that slot and because this is rotated 180 degrees the arrow is pointing in the same direction as as this pointing back to the person who's firing so that pointer tells you the elevation point and that should be rotated round so that washer is captive in the slot 
how it stays uh, captive I'm not really sure I might be putting one on my uh, version I'm not sure um, but you get the idea of how this works then underneath the gun you've got this pin which mounts through these three holes here and the gun sits uh, the lugs on the base of the gun sit in this gap here so basically this part here and here is pretty solidly connected to the underneath the gun then this central part here which has a thread running through it and a captive bolt and an adjusting uh, wheel by adjusting this wheel here it moves the central part left and right and obviously that central part is connected down to the main bar of the TNE through the wheel and, and so on and down to the traverse so basically in terms of adjustment of the, on the gun uh, traverse wise left and right you can uh, move the TNE here we go you can move the TNE down here on the traverse arm which is marked out graduated from zero in the center to 400 each direction so basically you can shuffle that left and right and clamp it with this lever here then for fine adjustment you can adjust this wheel here yeah which adjusts the gun left and right for fine tuning so you can twiddle it twiddle it for um you know for just f like small a few degrees or fractions of a degree even um and then here is your wheel for the elevation now if you look here on this one there doesn't appear to be any pointer pointing back to me and neither is there a slot in the TNE um, central piece of studding so I might not put one on mine at all because there doesn't appear to be one on, on certain models basically the number is just in front of you so that is good enough in my book there's no need to go messing around trying to put this pointer on it uh, as I say on some of them there's a slot cut up in this section which holds this like pointer area pointing this way at you but I don't really see the need for it so you get the idea how that works now in terms of reproducing this um, here is what I've done so far this is a piece of tube which is about 30 millimeters in diameter I've plugged the base of it welded it up put a put some bar in the base of it welded it in and then I've stuck it on the lathe and turned it down a bit and the top end I've welded an M20 nut now it's an M20 by 2.5 thread and then inside it yeah this isn't easy to do now with my hands um, full of video camera okay what we have here is I've got a piece of studding M, uh, which is M20 by 2.5 thread and this is threaded into this nut which is welded on the top of the tube and then it's ground back or, f or it's, it's machined back on the lathe actually uh, but you can see this winds out of here once I have finished it I'm gonna pack this with grease so that it moves around a bit freer so you get the idea uh, so then what I'm doing is I'm gonna weld an M12 reverse thread nut on the top of this um, 
that is here so that's going to go you can see it's reverse thread i'm spinning it the opposite way there and that slit sits into there that's going to be welded on the top so basically if i spin that there that goes down a hole which i've drilled on my lathe down the inside of this piece of stud so you get the idea so what what i'm doing effectively is the inverse to how the real one works uh, it's cheaper to buy a piece of forward thread stud in a diy store for this size which is m20 and then buy an m12 reverse thread stud here now this is is stainless steel this one and uh, you can see i can thread it into the pipe yeah so if, if i go so far it hits the bottom and then we'll wind outwards but on here on this nut i'm then going to weld some washers and those washers are here they are basically some steel discs i bought on ebay and i've drilled my own my own holes in the top i've put an m12 hole or half inch like 13 mil hole so i've got a little bit of slack in it then underneath i've drilled in it uh, a 20 mil hole then i filed it out and the reason i filed it out is so that that nut there will sit in it then i've got a smaller washer which i just happen to have kicking out with an m12 hole in it and i've also filed that one so the plan is they're going to be welded there around that nut so that nut is going to be held captive inside there then this washer here is going to sit on the top and finish it off so that is basically my collar um, and that nut is also going to be welded onto the top of here so that's the plan and that's how it's all coming together so hopefully you'll get the idea and the next stage i will show you it will be it all welded up Okay, uh, what I've done then is I've divided the perimeter up just by putting, scoring a line with uh, a hacksaw. Uh, put it, uh, that's, yeah, I've divided it up into, uh, well, 10 or 20, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, basically, I've sewn lines around, measured it all off, marked it sewn it and uh, I've put lines across the top then I've marked off the graduation so uh, it's not brilliant but it's quite adequate I think you know uh, once I've probably blued this and then wipe a bit of paint into the lettering uh, in white it should show up quite nicely so I've got 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 and all the way around to 95 and then back to zero again so quite happy with that so next thing i'm probably going to do is work out the uh, mounting which goes on this 20 millimeter um, traverse uh, bar and that mounting has got to look like that now my tube here 
is a little bit longer than the than the real one. Uh, I've done that deliberately just to try and get a little bit more travel out of it um, in case the real one uh, had uh, a different thread and everything and gave it more travel due to the pitch of the thread so to play on the safe side I've uh, decided to make the tube a little bit longer uh, yeah so I've got to work out what I'm going to do here probably try and use some fairly heavy bar something like a centimeter thick and put a bend in it somehow I'll have to think about that a bit might have to put some grinds um, or grind some of the metal away in this top area here so it's a bit thinner then bend it round then fill it back in with the welder and grind it back to shape again I don't know at the moment but I'm gonna work at that next and then weld it on the side okay so a um, couple of things I've done I've um, stamped up the top of that and I've welded a washer on the top so that it looks more like the real one if you look there it has this like washer on the top of it so I've done that just drilled three holes and plug welded it ground it back and then I've uh, glued it with my usual way with a blowtorch I'm fairly happy with it I know it should have more grip and things around the outside of it but really I don't know maybe if I ever feel like adding extra saw cuts I'll put every other section as a saw cut but I think it looks fairly okay as it is right so what else I'm doing uh, as I said before, I was going to have a go at this uh, this mounting for the uh, for the traverse bar, which is here. So I decided um, I was going to have a go making it out of one inch flat bar, centimetre thick, and cutting slots in it, and then bending it. But that didn't work. So in the end, I've gone for this. Um, about 2.5 to 3 mil thick bar and I'm bending it in a few sections uh, you can see basically what I'm doing so uh, you know uh, so I'm getting that sort of shape to it then I'm going to weld some flat bar uh, one centimeter thick flat bar on the bottom there coming down so you, you get the idea of what I'm doing uh, I've just clamped that there with and I've welded the side to join two pieces of flat bar together and it has this hollow underneath it you can see the hollow there but the hollow sort of doesn't go all the way through I don't know whether it's got like a um, a web down the center now I could put that web in so that you can see the hollow each side but not all the way through so I may well do that um, I need to straighten this little piece here because that part should be completely flat so I'm going to do some tapping around with a hammer uh, but you can see that that's how I've built it up so do you get the idea and this of course fits around the um, 20 mil bar which will be sitting in there that's the transverse bar so I'm going to be getting on with that and I'll uh, give you an update when it's done okay okay it's not looking too bad in the end I didn't put a web through in in the middle and I've actually welded this a little bit lower than it probably should be uh, I don't think it's a it's a big problem all it means is the the highest elevation that the gun would be capable of is slightly reduced by me putting that extra um, distance about 20 mil there if you look at a real one the real one should finish up at the top so you know uh, it's up to it's up to you if you want to make one of these um, say this is to approximately to scale if I get a 20mm pipe, as I did before, 
I can basically sit that in that gap there and it shows you that this this diagram is pretty much to the right scale so that there is only about uh, I'll tell I'll give you a measurement is uh, is just about four inches in length 10 centimeters in this case as I like to work in metric if I can yeah so so basically that's 10 centimeters in, uh, in length on a real one uh, so I've basically put the extra two centimeters in um, on the top uh, I could change this but I don't think I'll bother. I think the welding's come out quite nice. What I'm doing now is I'm thickening up this back end here and I'm gonna weld that in and then grind it back so that it's more the correct shape that it is here. You'll notice it has, it's thin at the top and then it thickens up a bit. Well, it seems to thicken up a bit to me. Maybe it's just an illusion actually, but uh, it should be thicker here. Uh, and then it has this little angle which steps out at the bottom and that's what I'm doing there with this piece and then I'm going to saw that off then after I've done that then I'm going to drill a hole probably put about an M6 uh, threaded hole through for some sort of screw or clamp okay okay so that leaves me with that uh, not brilliant but it'll do me um, got that little edge down there at the bottom sticking out um, and I've got my M6 hole threaded yes yeah, so I'm fairly happy with uh, with how it's starting to look now um, right the next stage is going to be making the um, top of the t &E. Uh, basically this part here so I've got a number of photographs of uh, basically how it functions and uh, roughly the shapes that uh, the components have to be so I've been studying them and uh, basically I've come up with these little cardboard cutouts which I've drawn out um, basically it's two of these and two of them and the idea is this is the outer sides here and here left and right uh, yeah and um, then I've got this part here which is going to be the central part now I need to cut two of these and two of those as I just said and uh, the idea is the central ones there's going to be two of them are going to be welded together so it becomes about 20 millimeters thick if I was to measure this 20 millimeters thick yeah and the outer edges are about 12 mil thick uh, at least on that one's 12 mil and that one is a little shade under 10 but I'm just going to make the two of them a centimetre thick because that's the bar stock which I'm playing around with so I basically then get a piece of this one inch by one centimetre um, 25 millimetre by one centimetre bar stock and mark out the components on that um, and then saw them out and here what the, here is what they're like once I've started to roughly saw out the shapes so as I say these two here I'm going to V the edges the internal edges um, all the way around then seam weld it all the way around so it becomes one block uh, then I'm going to drill various holes through the holes which I'm going to drill through are going to be well, I'm going to start off with a small drill, probably about three millimeters, and check that the alignment is straight all the way through. And if it goes wrong, then I have to correct it with a file, etc., something along those lines. 
then I'm going to finish off um, the hole that's up in this corner with a one centimeter hole this one's going to be um, probably a 12 mil or half inch hole over here be half inch I would think then these um, here right um, they are probably going to be um, 12 mil holes or um, 12 mil or half inch 13 mil holes there and there and I think what it shows is the there's a lock nut on the end of there so this is basically um, a fine adjustment transverse dial so basically by turning that you move the central block left and right in the top of the transverse and here is how the two nuts and this threaded bar are locked in so essentially you just have some washers or whatever over here and it's held captive by these nuts here I think you get the idea so this pin here with a big like eye bolt in I'm probably going to screw it into a uh, M12 thread over this end and that is why I'm going to drill the hole over here at 10 millimeters. then I'm going to tap it out to M12. Okay you get the idea, I'm just going to get on with this, I'm not going to show you me doing it because that would be a bit monotonous. Okay. So the first thing I've done is I've drilled M about 4.5 well 4.5 millimeter holes through the steel and I've drilled them in pairs uh, basically I've drilled the outer pairs and then I've drilled one of the outer ones with its corresponding inner one and vice versa and then I've confirmed that the rods or nails run through all four pieces uh, so the holes are all in a fairly nice alignment as you can see there yeah so uh, then I'm going to probably start drilling these out to the larger sizes probably to 10 millimeter first and then some of them are going to be drilled to larger to um, half inch size 13 mil thereabouts okay before I go drilling these holes out to the larger sizes while it's still got the small uh, nails in it I'm going to profile the, the finished shape uh, or at least a lot closer to the finished shape uh, basically work on it with a grinder for a bit and then take the, work, the, 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 the biggest piece of the metal off and then finish it off with a file so I'm working the whole shape over slowly but surely so you can see I've done the back end I've done that side now I need to do the same on this side <laughs> I'm also going to neck it in in the centre across here on both sides so it becomes like a figure of eight shape so it's uh, yeah so it narrows in at the middle we get the idea Okay, so what I'm doing now is I've cut this piece of 13 mil uh, mild steel. Well, I think it's mild steel, doesn't matter what it is. Um, ground the ends all the way around, uh, like 45 degree angle. I've uh, set this up with 
just over a six centimeter it's about 60 and a half millimeters um, I'm just giving it a slight gap um, slight amount of uh, free play so that I can put it onto the gun um, easily hopefully that will work I did measure the gun and hopefully it looks good right so you can see what I'm doing I'm basically clamping it up in there and I'm just going to um, do some welds on this I weld the uh, the fronts up there then I might take it out the vise and just check the back end is still a fraction over 60 millimeters um, and then weld the sides and just keep checking it as I'm doing it because I don't want it to pull in tighten up while I'm doing the welds yeah so I'm getting on with it okay okay the next thing I've done is I've taken my reverse threaded um, M12 rod and I've turned uh, about 20 mil off the top end of it well it's probably about an inch and basically I've then drilled a hole down through the central part um, the coupling point for the TNE um, mount and um, I've drilled a 10 mil hole through that so I've machined this M12 down to 10 mil there you can see there's a little bit of thread left on now I could have put an M10 thread on that and then drilled an 8 mil hole say through there and then threaded it in uh, but to be honest I don't really think there's a necess um, it's necessary to do that so what I'm doing is I'm just going to fit that into there like so it's a fairly nice fit and I'm just going to drill it and then I'm going to rivet it with one of these nails uh, as I used when I uh, did the riveting on the um, on the Browning machine gun so um, just going to make it simple and if I ever want to remove this for any reason it would be fairly easy to take that pin out okay okay so um, here's the progress there's the uh, the top of the top mount there's a little wiggle in that left and right but uh, you know it doesn't matter if I was really worried I'd just put a bit of a weld on the top you know so that's no issue uh, so um, this is the um, traverse the the fine adjust traverse uh, knob which I've done now uh, you can see how I've done the end of this I've put a little recess 10 mil hole in part way into the steel at the side of here so that sits into it then I've left an unthreaded section then I put M6 thread on it so basically if I push that across give it a little wiggle get the thing to move let's say it's not so easy with one hand there we go so get the thing over like so then I can put a couple hang on there seems to be a cat fight going on outside ah, anyway um, yeah so I put a couple of nuts on on there and now I'm, I'm sticking a nylon a uh, nylock <laughs> what the hell yeah so put a little nylock on on the end there um, it's been a u it's been used before this nylock so uh, but yeah you get the idea don't you put a pli put pliers on it basically it's a lock nut on the end so it's two two nuts you don't need to use a nylock but uh, this is just at hand and I know they wouldn't have had them in World War II, but if you're doing a more modern um, 50 cal mount for something more Cold War-ish, then a nylock would probably be acceptable, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, I need to put some grease on this thread, but you can basically see now how that works. So this top here is mounted underneath the gun. The uh, two lugs on underneath the 50 cal sit in this gap here uh, so they're captive uh, by the two sides of this 
and then because that M12 reverse threaded bar goes down into the TNE, you can then fine adjust this left and right. I'll be putting this on, uh, putting some grease on this, uh, making sure it's all free moving before I uh, I'm finished. I might run another. Uh, I might run uh, an M12 uh, um, die over this thread here to uh, put a recut on it and take some of the galvanised finish off, uh, and I might blue it all. So that'll make it move a lot easier. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, this here, I've just cut the top off an eye bolt. I've drilled a little M6 recess hole into the top of this bar, and then I've uh, MIG welded it in on the two sides, uh, <coughs> basically to slightly reproduce that. Now, this one has a chain now. I think the real one just pushes in and has a little ball a uh, spring loaded ball in there to keep it captive but what I've done is I've uh, obviously I've threaded this with an, M an M12 uh, thread at this end you see so um, yeah I, I just thought it was better to do that safer so um, in terms of the chain coming off from here and anchoring there that would be a bit of an issue because uh, obviously when you turn that the chain will wind up and tighten you know it will go all weird unless I've got some sort of chain with a swivel in it uh, so I'm gonna have to think about that what I may do is I might put some sort of um, collar here which uh, spins loose underneath there which is captive by a split pin or something and um, that's why I've left that bit of a gap so that I can add some sort of device so it might be some sort of like washer with a hole um, you know with a little arm on it um, so that the chain attaches into that and then secures over here so that the link pin doesn't get lost okay Okay, I've tried the t &E on the gun and I've realised that the elevation, the maximum elevation on the gun has been reduced too much due to the fact that I've welded this mounting point too low down on the pipe. So what I've just done is I've sawn this amount off the bottom of the pipe down there and I've cut the cap off the base which I'd welded in. I've welded a new base, a new cap in the base, spun it on the lathe, cleaned it up and I've cut the mounting off and I'm going to weld it just that little bit down from the top edge. That way it's going to give the gun more of a higher elevation point. Uh, I've realised there's more than enough travel uh, to dip the barrel down if I wanted to dip the barrel down for instance if the gun was mounted on an incline uh, on a high uh, level you might want to dip it down might you if you were on a on a hill or something so I was worried about not being able to dip the barrel enough but um, I would say there's more than enough travel because you've got to remember um, you've basically got twice that amount there because you've got the piece inside as well as that outer piece so you know you've got pretty much about that much travel on the gun um, you know so so there isn't really an issue anyway so I'm gonna weld that back up again so I've just sewn it off with a hacksaw I've uh, reprofiled it all and I'm gonna weld it back up okay
that should clean up okay with the grinder. Right, weld at the other end of it. Yeah, happy enough with that. Okay, so and now I've uh, re-welded that on. Uh, it's looking a little bit more like the real one. Uh, obviously, this one isn't nailed, but there's a few different patterns. It looks like um, according to maybe who made the TNE. I couldn't, you know, so I know I've put simple slots there, but later on in another day I might go back and change that. Um, I've made this little handle, it's not exactly the same as the real one, but it's got the same sort of taper and it's a similar length, which is six centimeters in length. And I've welded it to the bolt head of a M8 bolt and I've re-tapped that hole there. I did make one uh, which was M6 which is kicking around here. I made that uh, a little while ago and I realized it just looked too puny. It was nothing like the one in the picture because this is near enough the full scale picture there so I've got to try and put that keep that in my head that's full scale so this is full scale and that was too weedy so that's trash so there you go so there's an m8 one and um, basically you can tighten that up on the traverse uh, bar or traverse rail whatever it's called so there we go uh, all ready to set it up um, now I haven't put this little device on the front I can always put it on later thing is I haven't a clue what it's for it seems to be a piece of spring steel which is crimped at the bottom and then held behind that little pin there and I haven't seen what it does anywhere um, so I don't know uh, if I don't know what a thing is uh, quite often I tend not to put it in because I don't know because if I don't know its function I don't know what it's <sighs> Uh, you know how it's fitted and so on uh, how it interfaces with something else so uh, now up here there should be a little wheel uh, a second wheel fitted in now you will notice I've left a little gap there so the idea is that I might be putting one of them in at a later date but maybe not right at this moment uh, you can see in this picture two nuts locked together um, on that point there so I've got two nuts locked together but I've got a nylock on the second so uh, I might be changing that I've just put a simple chain on this um, I've just crimped the chain there into that little lug which I've welded on and I've wrapped the chain through the eye bolt thing which I've got on this one and crimped it back on itself so you know it works does its job as i said right at the start that thread there is a reverse thread on this like um, two centimeter center um, and if you want to do that you'll have to get a reverse thread um, like 20 millimeter piece of uh, um, bar uh, you know studding to do it that way whereas I've used a forward thread normal um, because it's cheaper and then I've used a reverse thread on the M12 uh, stud which goes inside so it's it's the opposite to how that's done but as you can see the uh, the function of it is the same um, the length of that pipe is about four inches Four inches yeah so we're good I'll be uh, fitting that on the tripod and testing it out
Yeah, so uh, it's just about completed now, the uh, Browning uh, M2 heavy barrel, 50 cal. Uh, fairly happy with how it's worked out. I have not fil um, put the, um, the like spade sections underneath these uh, discs here to grip into the grass. Uh, I decided, as I've done on a previous one I did years ago for a 30 cal, that they're actually not really worth me doing. Um, if you were ha if you had it set up on grass, then the thing would be pushed into the ground and you wouldn't see the bits underneath. And if you've got it set up in a building on a wooden floor then the things are going to be digging into the floor which would mean you've got to carry uh, some sort of plastic cups around to stop it digging into the floor so seeing it's never had them I decided I don't need to put them on uh, as I say if it was set up at an event on grass then ideally you push it into the ground so that you can't see the fact that they're there anyway and uh, so the other options is I suppose if it was on gravel then you would see them but you could always argue that you pushed them into the gravel so in the end I thought no I'm not going to put them on also if I've got it on display in my house on a, a nice wooden floor or something then I don't want it buggering the floor up there and it's not going to be taking uh, lots of recoil because it's uh, not a 50 caliber firing model it's just a blank firing one so there shouldn't really be much in the way of recoil uh, that's the port on the side there where a sten gun magazine goes in um, top opens up the rounds will probably drop out really when i do this there's the feeding mechanism if it was functional but I've put it in uh, probably not going to go I really need two hands to put this I'll tell you what I'm going to dump the rounds out close the lid yeah sight pops up and goes back down yeah, so you can look through the front sight there. Sight things in. Uh, yeah. Uh, the T&E has worked out really nicely. Uh, considering I've made it up out of scrap metal. Uh, it's a little wobbly. Uh, don't really know whether a proper T&E would have much wobble in it, but... Uh, Anyway, I'm not going to worry too much, um, so I've got a normal forward thread on that one and a reverse thread on that screw and when I rotate that, it will go up and down as I'm doing nice and slowly. You watch the end of the barrel. At the moment the barrel is winding upwards. Yeah so that functions i've also done the fine adjust um left and right adjustment here so if i screw that you should notice the barrel will move slightly to the left as it's doing and then adjust it back and it'll adjust to the left to the right i mean by turning the screw there yeah so uh, quite a, quite pleased with that Cox push the bolt back and it fires or at least the bolt will travel back. There's going to be some tuning to be done um, in terms of probably bolt weight, spring pressure, things like that. Uh, maybe in terms of the 
recoil as well. Um, the the gas blowback that comes from the, the, the breech. I'm going to have to play around with that. But at least I've got a nice tripod for mounting it all on now. Um, for setting it up. I've uh, stamped up the the numbers on the tripod from zero in the center under there through to 400 each direction and that is left uh, plain galvanized steel so that the paint doesn't keep getting scraped off. Um, I've set it up with this pin system so I can take the pin out and I can swing this arm down that way from the hinge point there and I can collapse it that way rather than running this pipe up and down and taking the paint off the leg here. Um, I've made dummy uh, release uh, catches here. Um, I've just welded some steel on the side then I've got a piece of uh, channeled steel from B&Q, shaped it and I've knocked a nail through, drilled a hole, knocked a nail through and, and riveted it over on the back and it's all painted up. Uh, these here are um, tapped M6 uh, and the bar is probably about 7mm thick. Uh, as I say, uh, they may be no, I don't think the nails, there's something else, there's another piece of bar. Might be actually 8mm um, thick, these bars. Uh, yeah, the front leg here, that's been done with this arrangement here. I should have made this 8mm, but I've used a one of those nails that I had left over. But I'm going to replace it for something slightly thicker. But that will... Uh, basically undo. I won't do it right now because the tripod will slip. Uh, you may remember I've got two locking points uh, using this little uh, pin which is welded there so basically when I release that this leg, the front leg, will fold back and it locks into another little hole there near the front which you can just see and then I can tighten that up and it locks the leg closed. Uh, the front leg here, I have made it telescopic and I've put a slot in the side on that one so that I can move the leg in and out and tighten it all up again. But I haven't used the catch system on the side because the likelihood of me using the front leg is quite, um, quite slim. I'm probably always just gonna set it up as it's shown here. So I'm fairly pleased 